Maho. Hello one, hello all. It's the most web-slinging ghost of them all, cast but in the flesh. And it's time for a review of Hiatus Coyote, Love, Heart, Cheat Code. This is the latest album from Melvin Australian band Hiatus Coyote. Their fifth album, if I'm not mistaken, but their second on Brain Feeder Records. Their first album on Brain Feeder, which I felt was a massive improvement from their debut, which I felt definitely had a more clear, definitely more interesting direction, and certainly with structure and tighter playing on this as well, and actually sounding more defined. Plus, he had stickier hooks, definitely more impactful. I did, however, wish the mixing was better, because as beautiful and more structured as the album was, the mixing definitely at points left a lot to be desired. And I feel when it comes to hooks, I feel when it comes to melody, they're still pulling together some fire on this album. Like on Make Friends, where the bass and the keys just blend beautifully together, and the snares just groove beautifully into the sound palette, along with Napalm's vocals panning channel to channel. And not only do I enjoy how gorgeous and smooth the sonic textures of this album is, but also how it indulges in philosophy of different views from different individuals on love and questioning whether you actually have friends, whether you're building a relationship, or this is just like mere acquaintance and also questioning the purity in humanity, and also searching for the good in humanity, while also simultaneously seeing if that person is right for you. And the opener is absolutely gorgeous, enchanting. A great start to the album, which I feel gives it a very classic, neo-soul, heavenly, blissful feel, like a very gates to heaven opening feel. And there's also Everything is Beautiful. I just love how everything is so bustling, but yet beautiful at the same time. I love the crispy drums, how fat and warm the bass is, and how the whimsical woodwinds give way to the squishy, funky guitars, and how they just play a rhythm over the instrumentation. Like, everything on this track just blossoms and coalesces just beautifully. Like, there's a lot of majesty to this track, but it still keeps the funk and the soul alive. Also, I feel Napalm's vocals are very expressive, but yet very technical at the same time. But still lively, still have a lot of soul to them. And I also want to add how hopeful and optimistic that the lyrics are here. And I feel in times like this, we definitely do need optimism and hopefulness, but... Hey, you know, things I think are going to look up soon. There's also Dimitri, which is definitely a neo-soul cut here that has probably the most steadiest groove here. But also D'Angelo is in the DNA here in a tasteful way with its steady grooves, psychedelic funk, with the accompaniment of some horns and otherworldly passages. And Napalm's vocals are so sticky here, and, and it seems like there are moments here where they do nods and references to fictional stories like The Wizard of Oz here, or Alice in Wonderland on the closer, which is why I'm wondering if that's why they put, why they put a cat in this album, Long Cat, which is a highlight for me. It's funny how the track is called Long Cap, but it's the shortest track here. I love how spacious it is, how orbital it is, and how I'm also getting shades of Bjork with the vocals. Long Cat is the longest cat in the world. And there's also moments here where they go absolutely ballistic. Probably the most unhinged I've probably ever heard a Hiatus Coyote track, like, ever especially on the track, which is probably my favorite track here, Cinnamon Temple, which is easily the most wildest and exciting track on the album, not only on the album, but also in their entire discography, where they're putting a mix of Death From Above, 1979, 
and Lightning Bolt with a dash of Yoko Ono meets Bjork. And definitely a departure from their earlier sound that they were going for in the beginning and even for their predecessor too. Like this track is just absolutely manic with rumbling bass and guitar lines. The whole sound palette is just so visceral, so fuzzy, so searing. It's dirty, it's hot, it's like a desert earthquake with unhinged refrains coming off almost like egg punk like. And after that is White Rabbit. And while I do admire the ambition here, I do admire the MIA influence. I don't think the structure or the execution of this goes over as well as it could have. And honestly, not necessarily the best mix of vocals either, as it feels like the vocals are way too overpowering, just burying the instrumentation. It just leaves the sound, it just leaves the song sounding really muddy and flabby. And the drums just sound so, like, I don't know how you've managed to make the, the drums sound so non-existent but out of whack at the same time. And there are other tracks here that do pale in comparison. And one of my biggest complaints here is just how short this album is. Like, on this I feel they've really shown their potential, but didn't exactly expand further than the lengths they were going on this album. Like, Yes, there are very adventurous tracks on here with massive improvements with, with their best songwriting yet, their best melodies yet, but why stop there? Why not go above and beyond? So yeah, definitely massive improvements here. I did enjoy this album overall, and I'm honestly feeling a 3.5 out of 5 on this album, but that's just what I think. If you've given this a listen, what did you think? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? And that's it. Caspa, got the ghost, hiatus coyote, love heart cheat code, till we meet again.